Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Richard C, your real property expert. And as you can see, I am studying because I am preparing for a very important exam. This is the Real Estate Consultancy Board Examination or the Real Estate Consultant Board Exam under PRC. So what is a real estate consultant? A real estate consultant is very different from your real estate brokers. So to become a real estate consultant, the requirement is to have 10 years of broker practice before you can take the exam. And a real estate consultant is defined as a duly registered and licensed real estate person who offers or render professional advice in terms of the acquisition, enhancement, and preservation or utilization of land. They also conceptualize planning, management, and project feasibility studies. So it only means that the role of real estate consultant, developer would consult them every time na merong gusto gawing project yung real estate developer and the real estate consultant would determine mean whether the project is feasible investment. Iba talaga siya sa broker. So a broker would sell the property. A real estate consultant would be paid for his professional advice or to develop feasibility studies just like this one. This is actually my feasibility study which is 20% of the total score. 20% for the oral defense or revalida and 60% for the written examination. That's why I am reviewing. So for today's vlog, what we're doing is I asked my staff to prepare 15 questions from the 200 question reviewer and I will try to answer them perfectly and I would explain to you why yun yung answer ko. So the goal of this vlog is of course for you to learn and to give you an overview what we're studying if you want to be a real estate expert. So ready real pros? Let's begin studying now. So now I will project the question prepared by my staff. So let's see kung ilang points makukuha natin. First question, two homes in the same addition have the same amenities, size, features, and location. One is priced at 1 million pesos and the other is priced at 1 million 100,000. I think inaas dito kung alin sa mga given na pinakatama. I think this question talks about the principle of substitution. Like when you have the same exact property and the other one is cheaper, there would always be an alternative. But it doesn't mean that the other home would sell quickly. So I guess the answer here is the lower price home will attract more demand. B. Okay, so check natin. Correct! Yes, that's one point. Okay, principle of substitution. Okay, next. Investment value is best measured by A. Market price to a specific investor B. Market value to a specific investor C. The cost of acquiring a competitive substitute property with the same utility to a typical purchaser or D, the present worth of anticipated future benefits to a specific investor. So I think the answer here is investment value is best measured by the present worth of anticipated future benefits to a specific investor. Kasi feeling ko that's the reason why people would buy real estate property. That's the reason people would invest in a real estate property because they're looking forward dun sa future benefits. So what that property could give them in the future. So my answer is D, the present worth of anticipated future benefit to a specific investor. Ready? Correct. Number three, a study of a proposed economic activity's capability of being accomplished under certain conditions and assumptions of marketing, technical, and financial aspects. Also, a study of the cost-benefit relationship of an economic activity. So, I guess the answer here would be a feasibility study because before a developer would launch the project, before a certain developer would build a project, they would always have a feasibility study whether the project is feasible or not. If it's not feasible, then they don't push through with the project, especially for bigger developments. The feasibility study, I think, also involves whether it is profitable. The technical aspect, whether a one-bedroom would be more saleable to the market or a two-bedroom for this area would have more demand. So that's the technical aspect. So I think the answer here is C, feasibility study, because it has marketing, technical, and financial aspect. Let me see the answer now. Correct. C. Feasibility study. Okay, so, so far so good. Blank is the amount that may be recovered when the property will be retired or disposed at a future time. My answer to this one is salvage value because property depreciates, diba? And I think whatever is left, it's called salvage value. So, let me see. Sana tama. So, 
So correct, yeah, correct. So it's salvage value. So salvage value is different from the physical value or the scrap value. It's the scrap value when it's more of like the cost analysis ng materials. Whether like how much ba yung ginamit na metal dito or how much yung ginamit. But um, salvage value is the depreciated value of the property when it's not usable anymore. So next, the period over which property may be profitably used is A, invested capital, B, capital structure, C, going concern, or D, economic life. My answer to this is D, economic life. Because when you say economic life, it has always something to do with profitability. The property might still be there. There's still the physical life of the property. However, the property is not economically usable anymore or it does not give you the returns you want. It does not meet the return. Probably the property is so old already, especially for commercial property. So when you invest in a property and you say, na, okay, I think this building would have have 25 years economic life. After 25 years, it does not mean that the building is gone. The physical aspect of the building, nandun pa. Kaya lang, it's not gonna give you a profitable income anymore because nga nagkakaroon siya ng depreciated value. So my answer is economic life for the duration of the property being profitable. And I am correct again. So, so far, so good. 5 over 5. Real estate investment technique using other people's money. Ito, alam na alam ko yung sagot dito because it is also my favorite real estate investment technique. So, the answer is leverage. In the real estate, it is an investment that you can leverage compared to other assets because I don't think you can leverage on the stock market or you can leverage on the mutual funds. That's why I really like real estate because meron siya characteristic of leverage. I am 100% sure that, that the correct answer is leverage. Yes. Okay, so tama. Okay, next. Land was purchased for 450,000. Cash appreciates at the rate of 15% compounded annually. About how much is the land worth after 5 years? So, I think this is a present value problem. So, this is how you will project how much is the value of the property after X number of years. No? Kung magkano na yung property after ilang years. I will screen record the calculator para makita nyo kung paano ko ginawa. I think the formula would be 450. 50,000 1 plus the interest rate or the percentage of increase which happens to be 15% so that's 0 0.15 raised to the number of years which is 5 years so the answer is 905,110 so my answer is A 905,110 that is the value of the land after 5 years if it appreciates 15% consistently every year Yun ang compounding interest. Yun ang value ng property. And correct. Number 8. Okay, halfway. So far, wala pa tayong mistake. So far, we're doing real good. So another math problem. A landowner expects that a certain 100 hectare land can be sold to a developer 4 years from now for 10,000 pesos per hectare. What cash price today would allow the owner to realize a 15% compounded annual rate of return on the entire land? Ang sinasabi lang ni owner dito is expected that he would have around 1 million pesos because 100 hectare times 10,000 pesos per square meter. So he would have around 1 million pesos after 4 years if the land continues to increase 15%. But if he wants to sell it today, but he still wants to get that amount after 4 years, how much should he sell the land now kung bibilhin yung land sa kanya ngayon? So this is technically a present value problem. What I'm going to do is I multiplied 100 hectares to 10,000 pesos per square meter, which would give me 1 million pesos. And then I would divide this 1 million divided by 1, which is constant, plus the interest rate, which is 15% as well, raised to 4 years, which happens to be the number of years. So obviously, the answer should be... Ah, okay. So my answer in the calculator is 571,753. Sabi dito, round off to the nearest 1,000. So my final answer is 572,000 pesos. That is the value of the land today. Let's see if correct. And yes, correct yung answer. Ah, another math problem. 
The annual net operating income from an apartment house is 110,000. If a capitalization rate of 11% is used, the indicated market value of the property is this one is major direct to the point. You'll just have to divide 110,000 with the capitalization rate of 11%, and technically you get the answer of 1 million pesos. The indicated market value of the property is 1 million pesos. But to explain it to you, capitalization rate is technically the measurement we use when buying commercial properties. It's important to use the capitalization rate for you to know whether the price is a good buy or not. So kasi for example, in a commercial property in the same area, you have the same price per square meter, you have the same rent per square meter, you have a very similar property and your capitalization rate, for example, is 11%. You have to make sure that whatever is the net operating income, you divide by the capitalization rate, then that is the right amount of the property. So my answer to this one is 1 million pesos, which is correct. Okay, next. Which of the following describes a buyer's market? A, there are few properties for sale in a particular area and also very few buyers. I don't think that's it because that's called equilibrium. B, there are few properties for sale in a particular area and very many buyers. So I think that is a seller's market. C, there are many sellers in a particular area as against to very few buyers. So I think this is the right answer for buyer's market. But D, there are many properties properties for sale in a particular area but many just wants to rent and that is called a rental market. So my final answer is C which happens to be this, there are many sellers in a particular area as against the very few buyers. And correct. Okay. Ilan pa? Five pa. Okay. The Miguel family owns a home on a coastal area which is about five years old. Recently announced plans for a new international airport will place their home directly in line with the main runway that ends one mile before their home. If the airport is constructed, will this diminish the value of the Miguel home? A, A yes because of economic obsolescence. Uh, economic obsolescence is when the property is not usable anymore due to external changes. I think that's the right definition. B, yes because of functional obsolescence. Technically, it's still the same function. There was no land conversion, so I don't think that's the answer. C, no because value would increase due to the location close to the airport. I think that's not it. Marami rin namang bahay sa gilid ng airport eh, if you look at it, but it does not increase the value. Or D, no because noise from the aircraft passing overhead is not recognized as affecting property values. My answer to this, if the value of the home would be diminished Kung tinayuan ng airport directly in line sa main runway, my answer is yes because of economic obsolescence. Because economic obsolescence are external factors that affects property values. And that is correct. Okay, what factors does not affect the value and demand of a real property? A, government policies. I think government policies does affect the value of real estate properties because government do regulate the supply of real estate property. Government regulates the prices of real estate properties as well. Sila yung nag-approve eh. That's why you have your DSUD approval or before you have your license to sell issued by the government. So definitely, government policies and regulations does affect affect the value and the demand of the property. B, ownership. Yes, this is a possible answer because ownership does not affect the value of the property. C, demographics. It is part of that factor. D, interest rates. Of course, interest rates play a very important role in terms of the value and demand of real estate property. So is economics. I think my answer is B, ownership. Ownership does not affect the value and demand of real property. Correct. So, I think three more questions. So far, perfect score tayo. The relationship that exists between price and yield, the answer to this is inversely proportional. Of course, the higher the price, the lower the yield you will be getting. Kaya ko titignan nyo, the higher yung property prices natin, bumababa yung yield natin. Before 7 was our average yield. Ngayon, nasa 6% na lang. Of course, the better price mo mabibili property, the higher the yield you will be getting. So, this is inversely proportional. 
Correct. So next question. The starting point in most income analysis of real estate where the amount of money the property would bring in if it was completely occupied all year long and all tenants paid their rent. So I think the answer to this one is potential gross income. So potential gross income is a very important measurement metric. So when you buy a property and let's say for example uh, the rental income of the property is 25,000. Then you multiply 25,000 by 12 it gives you 300,000. So 300,000 is your potential gross income. No? Pero of course, hindi included doon whether if you have like months na hindi mo maparent, there's no vacancy rate, there's no bad debt. Ibig sabihin, your tenant did not pay for that month. If you include mo na yun, it's now called effective gross income. So my answer to this one is a potential gross income. And correct as well. And last question. A factor derived from comparable properties and applied to expected rental income in order to estimate a value. It may be used in finding the value of a property. It is the ratio that expresses the relation between gross income and sale price of the property. The answer to this one is gross income multiplier or GIM because it is the relationship between the gross income and the sales price. So, paano ginagamit yung GIM? Let's say, for example, you have a friend who owns a property in the same condominium building kung saan mo rin gusto bumili ng unit but your friend is getting a 560,000 pesos annual rental income and you saw a similar property, same yung size, same yung layout, but the property income is only 500,000 pesos. Now recently, your friend sold his unit for 3,920,000 because 560,000 yung annual rental income. Yung binibili mong unit, yung annual rental income niya lang is 500,000 pesos. So how would you be able to determine kung magkano dapat yung price ng property? So you'll just have to multiply 500,000 times the GIM which happens to be 7 because 3,920,000 divided by 560,000 that gives you a GIM of 7 for your friend's unit. So because it's a comparable similar property, you use that 7 to multiply with the annual rental income of 500,000 so which gives you 3,500,000 therefore you should only buy the property at the price of 3,500,000 because it gives you a lower annual rental income even if the same or similar yung size ng property so that's how you use GIM it's a comparable ratio so my answer is gross income multiplier which is correct. That's 15 over 15 real pros. I think I am ready for the board examination. But these were basic questions. Eh. Meron pang mas advanced questions na mas mahirap. Kaya lang, baka mas technical. So I hope real pros, I was able to share something with you guys today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me as I review for the upcoming board exams. I hope you learned a lot. And if you did, please comment, God bless, or send me your good luck for the upcoming board exam. Don't forget to like share and subscribe give it a big thumbs up and follow me on my social media accounts so again this is richard c and i'll see you real soon